Here, we present our work titled A Large-Scale Dataset of Gaussian Splats and Their Self-Supervised Retraining. 3D Gaussian splatting has become the de facto choice of 3D representation in many vision tasks. Most works employ 3D Gaussian splatting to map a 3D field with 2D supervision. There has been no prior work exploring the parameter space of 3D Gaussian splats directly. Along the way, self-supervised learning has gained traction in computer vision. In particular, the generative pre-training method, masked autoencoder, has shown great promise and been extended to 3D by targeting point clouds, meshes, or voxels. Thus, the research question we ask is the following. Can we apply masked pre-training directly on parameters of 3D Gaussian splats? To this end, we present our shape splat dataset and Gaussian MAE method. ShapeSlat is based on commonly used 3D object datasets, ShapeNet and ModelNet. To generate the datasets, we start with CAD models, which are then rendered into 2D images from uniformly spaced viewpoints. Once we have the image pose pairs, we carry out standard Gaussian splatting training together with compression to reduce the redundancy. In total, we obtain 65,000 Gaussian splatted objects in 87 categories, which takes about two years to render on a single 12 gigabyte memory GPU. Next, we visually compare the Gaussian centroids on the left with that of the initializing point clouds on the right. Gaussian centroids differs largely. If we look at other parameters, opacity, scale, and rotation, here colorized separately based on their values, it's clear the high complexity of the distribution with respect to spatial dimensions. With this uniqueness comes the challenges of masked pre-training on Gaussian splats. How to accommodate different distributions when grouping Gaussians into patches? And how can we effectively tokenize the Gaussian parameters? We answer these with our Gaussian ME method, Let's break down our method into three main parts, starting with how we group the Gaussian splats. We begin by downsampling the Gaussian splats and use furthest point sampling to get the group centers. Then we do not just use Gaussian centroids for distance calculation at each center. We consider additional Gaussian attributes such as opacity and scale. By incorporating more attributes, we encourage that the groups are not only spatially close, but also share similar characteristics. Once we have the groups, we move to the splat pooling layer. Here, instead of finding k neighbors for each group center, we enlarge the neighborhood to cover more Gaussians. Then we project Gaussian parameters to its intermediate feature, and then use a temperature-scaled weighting mechanism, which assigns weights to the neighboring splats. The weights are used to determine how their features should be combined to a more compact one. The temperature here is dynamic and depends on the context, allowing the model to either average the features or focus on specific ones when necessary. Finally, we enter the masked autoencoder training. The visible tokens are passed through the encoder. The decoder's job is to reconstruct the masked tokens. After that, several projectors recover the Gaussian attributes that are used for embedding. Here we show the reconstructed Gaussians of the masked inputs. Our model can effectively reconstruct the fine details like table foot and chair frames. We evaluate the relative reconstruction error for each Gaussian parameter using three different grouping methods. Green for centroid grouping, red for Gaussian feature grouping without centroid, and blue for feature grouping with centroid. The results indicate that incorporating additional features into the grouping process, especially when combined with centroids, leads to improved reconstruction accuracy. And the better overall reconstruction leads to better downstream task performance. Next, as evident from the ablation results, both Gaussian feature grouping and splat pooling layer improve the classification performance compared to the vanilla Gaussian MAE. In conclusion, we present ShapeSplat dataset, which enables the masked pre-training on 3DGS parameters. Together with our Gaussian MAE method, which achieves notable performance increase compared to the point cloud baselines, 
We hope our work opens a new avenue for self-supervised 3D representation learning. Thanks for your attention.